have looked into my eyes You have seen what I am But still you're by my side Telling me I can't And there are times that cause to pain And times that make mistakes Somehow you Good afternoon, and thank you for joining All About Us Teen Talk TV. Today is our first taping, and we want you to, we invite you to sit back and enjoy. Uh, we have very special guests that we will introduce you to in a, in a minute. But today is tapping to understanding your purpose. Uh, we want you to be, be driven by what's in your heart and know it's okay because you are designed just for you and your purpose. And today is all about understanding your purpose and your gift and tapping into it. Uh, my name is Shavana Johnson. I am the CEO and founder of YRAP, Young Women Rising Above Perceptions. I am the CEO and founder of the Whitney Johnson Foundation. Uh, I am the CEO and founder of All About Us Youth Magazine. Uh, and we just want to thank you for joining, joining us. And if you would like to know more about us, you can go to www.aauym.com. You can also reach us at 1-866-537-1110. And thank you for joining us today. <coughs> All About Us Teen Talk um, is brought to you by AAA Youth Magazine. And our mission, this is our mission, AAA Youth Magazine is to motivate all youth to define their vision and create greater opportunities to help them meet their destiny. The focus of the magazine is to help them establish a true relationship with their purpose and to engage and encourage and nurture a loving relationship of self to allow them to explore and develop a greater respect for the person they are seeking to become. Um, I would like to introduce my panel today. Um, we have Pastor Sharina Butler. Uh, we have Shay. We have Elizabeth, we have Iki, and we have Pastor Kirk Lyons. Uh, I'm going to start with Pastor Sharina Butler. I would like for you to introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about you. Well, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Sharina Butler, Pastor Sharina Butler. And um, I am a mother of three children, my oldest son being 25 years old and 21-year-old uh, and 14-year-old. Um, I currently uh, worship at Mount Zion Temple Apostolic Church in Roosevelt, New York, um, under Pastor Margaret Giles. And um, I love the Lord. Um, you know, He's everything to me. Um, I love education. I am a teacher um, by profession. I've been teaching for 17 years, and um, from grades K to 12. And now um, my focus is as an educational consultant now in the, um, in the South Ozone Park School District. Um, and I just, I love it. I love education. I love children. Um, I don't know what else to say. Um, as an educational consultant, um, mm -hmm. what is it that you do with the kids? Well, actually what we do, um, I work for um, an independent um, I am an independent contractor under okay. Alpha to Omega Youth Services, and what we do is we go into schools um, and help those children that are low performance in the ELA by profession, by, uh, professionally working in the uh, English language arts area, where we work with those students that are not doing well um, in the English English arts, and we prepare them for the ELA uh, state testing. And what we do is we bring them, we bring their uh, performance up. Um, oh. mm -hmm. in that area where they're weak at in most areas of reading. We, we help in those areas. Okay. Well, we thank you and we welcome you today mm -hmm. for being part of our panel. Mm -hmm. And next we have... I'm Shayla Williams, but I prefer Shay. I'm, in tenth, I'm going to 10th grade. I'm in 9th grade right now. 
Um, I run track and that's my last name. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Amaya and I'm also going to the 10th grade and I love sports and I love cars. <laughs> um, my name is Akiara Perla. Um, I'm a female wrestler. Um, I am 15. I'm 15 and um, I go to the Freshman Center and going into 10th grade. And next on our panel, we have Pastor Kirk Lyons. Good afternoon. Um, I'm the senior pastor of St. James United Methodist Church in St. James, Long Island. As well, I'm the senior servant leader for Brothers Keepers Fellowship, which has fellowships in Newark, New Jersey, Brooklyn, New York, as well as Long Island, New York. And my brother's keeper, what exactly does that, what, what do you do for my brother's keeper? Brother's Keepers Fellowship was founded in 2008. Um, we do several things. It is a ministry that is geared specifically for men. Uh, a lot of our focus is on young men. We have Wednesday evening uh, fellowships, which consist of Bible study and uh, critical interaction between each other. We also have a Monday morning um, MANA conference prayer call that we host from 7 a.m. to 7.15. Every Friday night, we lead a group of men into uh, some of the more troubled areas of Long Island to do what we call boots on the ground. It is a, <clears throat> it is a midnight prayer walk where we go to these areas and we engage uh, specifically the young men in the, in the areas that we find uh, that are out on the streets after midnight. We also have what we call an accountability program, which matches one man to another man, very often an older gentleman to a younger man. It is, it is mentoring, but it is, it is a transparent relationship where you are accountable to each other. We have what we call the Philemon Project, which begins by letter writing uh, men that are incarcerated and then follow up by sending care packages and, and visitations, and we help prepare them for their release. And I'm, I'm just glad to say that. Uh, this summer we have three gentlemen that are that are being released, and we're excited about oh, wow. uh, uh, awesome. what's what's in store for them now. That's yes. awesome. We're going to have you come back, and we're going to have a panel of young men because we really, really need to talk to our male population as well. Not only just you know addressing young women's needs today, but today is really about understanding and tapping into your purpose. So. I really want to just get into the logistics and have a conversation about purpose because we each have a purpose and we need to understand it. Even though that I'm growing younger every day, we, I'm still tapping into my purpose and I really, really uh, want the young people, I find that in this generation, they're having problems with tapping and understanding who they are. So today we just want to kind of give them just an overlook of how we can help and give guidelines on how you understood to tap into your purpose. So I want to talk about that today. I want to understand what do you feel is your purpose? We're going to go with you, Shay. We're going to start with you first. Um, my purpose? You mean like in life? In life. What do you feel your purpose is? My purpose is... Uh, I don't know, be, show everybody that there's more than just a female, like, I'm smart, I'm athletic, and I think God just put me on this earth to find myself and to help others. Okay. Miss Elizabeth? Well, I think my purpose here is just to help others out with whatever they need help. Okay. Care. I believe that my purpose is to outshine myself every single day. Mm. Do better than I did the day before mm. till I reach the point that I feel like I have done good enough, but like better than enough. And mm -hmm. I want to feel, and I still want to do more than that. Okay. Pass the line. I do you mind if I engage oh, these young ahead, ladies? Oh, go ahead, engage, engage. I, I'll I'll <laughs> First of all, I want to say that I'm extremely impressed to hear you all uh, in the way that you speak of yourselves. And Shay, it was wonderful that the first thing that came out of your mouth was to say that you're smart. Smart is attractive. 
and don't ever forget that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the age that I believe you're all 14? 15. 15. 15. Okay, 15. Um, it, it has been said, and, and, and it's probably true, that you are much more developed and mature than your male counterparts. Mm -hmm. And that can be a bit challenging for you um, because a lot of things are going on in a young man's body at this age and when they start thinking about what things are important about themselves when they when they get asked questions about characterizing themselves most of what goes on is is uh, are you here coming from them is physical mm -hmm. um, their strength their prowess on the athletic field and and so on and so forth because th they connect to that and that and that drives <coughs> their self-esteem very often you don't find them talking about the internal attributes about mm. being smart about wisdom uh, think things of that nature so they're they're a little lagging behind and I know that that can be a challenge for you all when you get into the dating part because you've already arrived at a certain place in awareness of yourself and things that are important for you when a lot of them have not gotten there just yet and then there's there's peer pressure that 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 they deal with and it's it's so important for them to be acknowledged and affirmed by their friends, um, even to the point of sometimes not caring for you all in the way that they should and in the way that they know is right, but in order to put up a front to impress their friends, they may say and do things that are not as kind as they should be to, mm. towards you. So. Let me apologize in advance <laughs> <laughs> on behalf of these young men as they, as they are working towards getting themselves together. And part of the work that, that we do in Brothers Keepers is, is to work with those young men to help them get that together so that they, they are prepared to properly entreat you all in you know, the way that they should be and help, help them to get on, the, on track to, to being matured. Purpose is, a, is, a, is an extremely important thing. I think it's, I think it's difficult at the age that you are to really land somewhere with purpose. I think, I think you may go through a period where it shifts and changes over time. One of the things that you should be in tune with is your passions because very often you have a seed uh, that is planted in you uh, for a passion for something that uh, is linked to your purpose. You don't always know it at first. You have to grow into it, but we typically have um, a passion for something or, and, or a gifting for something that is, that is tied into our purpose. So when you have a passion for something, do what you have to do to cultivate those, those gifts and work hard at them. Um, when, we're, when we're given something, um, we're given an opportunity, a great head start to be good or even great at something. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it is up to us in the work that we put into it. I, um, I was a musician from the time I was 13 um, and then I was a professional musician for over two decades and it was something I had an early passion for. The interesting thing is that the disciplines that were required of me in music have been transferable as a pastor, as a minister of the gospel. I spent countless hours practicing, countless hours uh, reading, reading the history of other musicians learning learning tons of music. Um, we have what we call standards in, 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 in music where certain songs every musician is, is um, assumed to know. Pastor Lyons, can yes. we just hold on that note? Sure. We're going to take a break. We're going to go to commercial and we'll be right back. Brevard. I'm here for Multimedicine in Westbury, New York. We're located at 1065 Old Country Road, Suite 214. Been here for about 15 years. The practice has medical doctors, physical therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists. We also do pain management and we have orthopedists on staff. Here at Advanced Multimedicine Rehabilitation, we've got physical therapists on staff. We treat an array of conditions from neck pain to back pain, shoulder pain. We treat carpal tunnel. We treat a lot of car accident patients, slip and falls. We treat patients with knee injuries, with ankle injuries, 
We have state-of-the-art equipment. We've been here for over 15 years. We do a vast array of diagnostic testing from x-rays to EMGs. What is an EMG? It's a diagnostic test that allows a doctor to determine where the pinched nerve is. Cora is a physical therapist at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. She's working on Stephanie, who was involved recently in an automobile accident. Stephanie has tight thoracic and cervical musculature, and Cora is doing some myofascial release work and some therapeutic stretching doing it to help her with her pain. Vicky is also a patient here at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Vicky is now working her leg muscles, specifically her quadricep muscles, trying to strengthen them after an injury she sustained. Find yourself in need of any type of physical therapy. Please don't hesitate to call Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Located in Westbury, New York, in Suite 214. Phone number is 516-334-7000. Or find us on our website at advancedmultimedicine.com. Welcome back, and we thank you for joining us for All About Us TV, uh, All About Us Teen TV Talk, and we're going <coughs> to finish out with Pastor Kirk Lyons. Yeah, uh, um, like I was saying, the, the disciplines are transferable. Learning how to work uh, with individuals, how to teach individuals. I, I taught music in public school for three years. Um, I developed a love for languages because I was traveling around the world as much as I did. Um, not knowing that one day I would have to study the biblical languages and become proficient at them. But, but a lot of the disciplines that I had to master as a musician um, have been transferable and useful to me um, as a pastor. And, and I want to just encourage you all to, to dive into those things that you have a passion for and use them. And, and never, uh, never let anything or anyone else outside of yourself and God, dictate your self-worth. Always know who you are. Yes. Walk in that confidence. Mm -hmm. I, I, I definitely agree. Mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Serena, do you have anything you would like to add to that? I totally, I totally agree with Pastor Kirk Lines. Um, knowing your self-worth, and it, you know, when you when you know who you are, and understanding your purpose. Oh my God. I'm, I, I, you know, you know, us as ladies, we're very emotional. Yeah. And um, <laughs> and I'm going to try to, you know, get my point across without being so emotional. Mm -hmm. um, talking about purpose has been something that I didn't know I was driving it so for so many years mm -hmm. until you know something tragic happened in my life, um, and I had to understand why am I here. So, um, and that's looking for love in all the wrong places, knowing your worth. And, you know, as, at a young age, you know, at the age of 15, um, I, I met and later married my, my children's father. What I thought was love wasn't love. It was more or less, you know, infatuation. Um, and then not having my father present in my life, you know, it left me in a place where I was looking for love. Mm -hmm. and, and and was involved in a relationship with a boy at the age of 15, young. We were young, and um, later on married him, and we, out of that union came three beautiful children. But I, I suffered a lot of abuse because I was looking to him for everything, um, to be that father figure that I didn't have. And I wanted things from him that he could not fulfill because I didn't know my worth. I didn't know what I brought to the relationship. And um, it wasn't until, um, you know, things started happening and I actually got into a relationship with God and, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. and really understanding, you know, John 3 and 16, when I began mm -hmm. to get in a relationship with God, so loved the world that he mm -hmm. gave. And um, 
I didn't receive that giving that I was looking for in the relationship with the natural man that I received from God. And when, when, you know, as I grew in God, I really understood what love was really all about. Love does not beat you. Love does not hit you. Love does not say that yes. you call you all sorts of names mm -hmm. that are not what your mother and your brothers have said, you know, you know, you are. And, and really just my mind was messed up what I really thought love was. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I, did, I, I developed and grew in love with God that I really understood what real love was about and um, can truly say that now even still growing yes. still growing in him and still mm -hmm. understanding my purpose even now at the age of 42 still still learning you know and I love it because I'm growing more and more in love with God because he's teaching me more things and um, I could I could I, you know how they say you can write a book? I can tell a story about well, the many things. We're waiting for your book. We're waiting for your book. <laughs> <laughs> that have transpired. But purpose, I thank God for, for that, Pastor Kirk Lyons. Knowing your worth, worth. and what worth. you bring. And you are a diamond. And, and just understanding yes. who you are in God is just, it's, it's amazing. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's so, and it's so wonderful. I have never, ever, ever knew love like I know now. Mm -hmm. So I know a man can't come in my life and give me anything. Exactly. Because God has, I'm complete in him. Exactly. So what I was looking for from a man, God. Oh, God, is he's the one. And I learned not to put the man in the place of God. Yes. I, I drive that point home when mm -hmm. I'm mentoring the girls, talking about developing relationship with yourself. Right. That is so important. Because you need to understand who you are before you can give yourself away. That's true. So in, in understanding and developing a relationship for your purpose, you not only have to develop a relationship for your purpose, but you need to develop a relationship with yourself. If you don't love yourself, then how do you expect that young man or who you're engaging with mm -hmm. to love you? What do you think your worth is? I, I always ask you all this question, don't I? What <laughs> yeah. is your worth? Well, you all should be able to answer that question. What is your worth? What are you worth? What are you worth? Oh, yeah. I'm <laughs> gonna, I want you to hold on to that, but you can, you can answer that by the end of the show. But what is your worth? And, and understanding that worth. I'm going to read the, the first. Who wants to read the first passage in creation? Okay. You care? Are you going to read the first? You can tell Genesis 1. Read that passage, and we'll, t we'll talk about it. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing and that crepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. He created you. So when he created you, he made you in his likeness, which means you are worth far beyond everything that he made. He took the time to create you with his hands. So why didn't he speak you into existence? That's a question that I have. Have you ever asked that, yourself that question? He didn't speak you into existence. He formed you from the clay. Am I right or wrong? Absolutely. So did you ever ask God, why did you form me? Why did you make me so unique, so important, so purposeful? Have you ever asked yourself that question? I'm just, I'll wait for it. I, I, I'll let you answer, get your thoughts together. Who wants to answer first? Well, I, personally for myself, I'm finding out... <clears throat> Why God made me. He made me for such a time as this to connect with Pastor Sharina, Pastor Lyons, and to connect with you to help you with this walk in life because I'm still walking this life. I'm still understanding this love. And every day and every night, you know, God walks with us. He comes in all hours of the day, all hours of the night, and He talks to you and He, he just shows you 
love beyond all you may ask or think. And the blessings that he gives you is just on immeasurable to any gift. Any gift that any man or any woman could ever give you. But when he hung on the cross and he gave his life, every day I just humble myself because I can't imagine who can give me a greater gift. Who could give you a greater gift than the sacrifice that he made? But he made that sacrifice so that you would understand your purpose and the love <clears throat> that is in you because he placed it in you, in the purpose. What do you think about that statement? No response. Me? Yeah. What? What are you? Oh, you talking to everybody else. Oh. Well, anybody can respond, but I mean, how do you feel about the creation of yourself? Well, sometimes I feel like there's no. There's, why am I here? I ask God that question sometimes when I'm in like a bad mood or something. But then I remember, God, God, formed me mm -hmm. for a reason, for a purpose. Mm -hmm. and that purpose is to bring joy, bring happiness to people, to... Um, I'm talking about the relationship with you. I'm not oh, talking about other people. Oh. I'm talking about the relationship you have with him. To go deeper into a relationship with him. When you go deeper into a relationship with him, and when you pray, and you have your Bible study, I mean, what does it mean to you? What, is it, what does that mean in helping you develop who you are? Well, I appreciate every, like, I would give my life up for God like he did for me. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually, uh, <laughs> I love, I love God and Jesus and everything that they, that he did, mm -hmm. that God did for us. Mm -hmm. Like, if he would have never died on the cross and made that sacrifice, I, I wouldn't be here. Nobody else would be here. So, for me to say... That I love God is like saying that somebody loves the life beyond and beyond. I don't, I don't okay. know. All right. <coughs> you got any thoughts? No. Okay. What about you, Ikea? All right. What I about wanna, you? I want to say something to the passage that that we listened to Ikea read for for you all. Mm -hmm. When you when you read that passage again, when you go home in your private time. Um, Make sure you hear uh, that you are formed to be the reflection of God. Yes. That when that people should see the image of God in you, yes. when they see you, uh, when they watch you, your character mm -hmm. should be the reflection of God. That that's something that God desires, and it's and that desire and purpose was from the very beginning, and it's in, it, it's housed in that scripture. Mm -hmm. But there was something else. God should be able to count on you or to trust you to care for the rest of creation. Mm. If, 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 if humanity mastered those two things, so many of the problems we're experiencing, we wouldn't be experiencing. Mm. If we cared for the animal kingdom and, and the earth and the way that God commanded. Mm -hmm. Remember, this is, this is the first thing humanity is hearing from God. In, in terms of purpose, to be the reflection of God, mm -hmm. his image, uh, and to care <clears throat> for the rest of creation. We, we, we were given dominion. That means we're, we're stewards. We're caretakers mm -hmm. over everything else that God made, which is an awesome responsibility for humanity. That means we shouldn't just consume and use things up until they are no more, but we should preserve and protect the rest of creation as well. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Um, and, and as you grow in your relationship with God, you'll become more conscious and you, um, of those things that are on the mind of God. Because if they're on his mind, they should be on your mind. I remember one time, it's something as minute as throwing out a piece of paper out of the window on, and I just it's trash just thrown on the ground. I got so convicted one day, and it was a couple of years ago. I said, "Oh God, 
I'm so sorry. I said, because I'm, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not, I wasn't, you know, taking care of what he gave me. Everything in this earth, he gave it to us. Mm. And he said, I've given you dominion over it. When you, God gives you a gift, and mm. let me ask you a question. When your parents give you a gift, I know, but like something that you really <laughs> cherish, how do you care for it? How do you take care of something that you know it costs a lot? It costs a lot of money, but it was a gift. You you received it. How do you take care of those things that you receive? We'll give them a few minutes to think about mm -hmm. that, and we're going to be going to commercial, and we'll be right back to finish the thought on how do you, what do you think about the gifts that are given to you. Hi, my name is Dr. Tom Dow. We have a multidiscipline practice in Melville and run Cockman, New York. And we treat patients with many, many different conditions, from newborns through geriatric patients with numerous different techniques. Uh, there's a technique and a, a type of treatment for every class of patient. We have them all here. Here's my son Thomas, also a doctor of chiropractic, working on one of our patient's cervical spine. This patient has had chronic neck pain for many, many, many years, has been to a multitude of different practitioners with little or no response. And with our specialized techniques, she has improved tremendously and continues to improve on a daily basis. Uh, we have two practices, one in Melville and one in Ronkonkman, New York. We are a multidiscipline um, chiropractic office. Uh, what that means is we have chiropractors, massage therapists, acupuncturists, psychologists, um, all working as a team and a network of outside professionals such as orthopedists and neurologists uh, that we work hand in hand with to help determine what your injuries are and the best way to uh, treat your injuries. Um, I have the great pleasure of having my son in practice with me. Uh, we work hand in hand, father and son, to give our patients the best care possible um, and a staff which is loving, caring, um, and you'll never have to wait at all in our office for service. Many times patients come into our office and they have what's called a soft tissue injury. Soft tissue injuries are like scars inside your body. If you've ever been cut on the outside of your body, you get a scar. The same thing happens inside of your body to your muscles and ligaments. So our job is to determine where those are, stretch the muscles, adjust the vertebra back into their correct position, and then refortify the normal structure with um, exercise. That's what we do best, and I hope someday you'll come see us at one of our two offices. Thank you. Welcome back, and we were talking about understanding your purpose with Pastor Sharina. We're going to let you finish your uh, statement, and then we'll, we'll move on. Yes. So, girls, I was asking you, when you receive a gift from your parents, or anyone who gives you a gift, what do you, how do you treat your gift? I always put it up somewhere where nobody else can touch it because I know it was expensive, or I just really love it because it came from that person. So you, you cherish it, you yeah. take very good care of it. Yeah, you always have to, even if it's um, the littlest thing, you must, you have to cherish it, you have to, because the person that gave it to you 
really thought that you would like it and it would mean a lot to you. So you have to cherish it with everything that you have. Make sure that you take care of it no matter what it is. Very good. Yes. I agree with them. Like I feel like when I get a new gift, I feel joy and like I feel appreciated that somebody had the time to think about me and buy me something. Even if it's like a, just a stuffed animal or a bracelet or something, I appreciate the thought. So how would you feel if someone, even if somebody came and took it, or I, how would you feel if they, you know, didn't respect your gift and did something to it, damaged it, took it? How would that make you feel? I would get aggressive because <laughs> they touched something that I really is <laughs> really important to me. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. That's yeah. interesting. Um, hmm. I would just admonish you each to see yourselves as a gift. As a gift. And yes. the same way that you protect and cherish and lift up the gifts that you've been given, demand to be treated that way. Yes. Protected. That's very cherished, good. Cherished. Honored. That's good. Because you yourselves are a gift. Yeah. And, and always see yourself as a gift. As a gift. And never let anyone treat you uh, as anything less than a wonderful priceless gift. Exactly. Yes. I always tell them that because you are queens in waiting. Yes. And queens just don't go anywhere or do anything. They're, they're, when they do, they walk with grace. They re command respect. Yes. They command their atmosphere. And I always tell the girls, wherever you are, command your atmosphere. This is my atmosphere, my time. Command, I'm commanding my atmosphere. So whatever you bring into that atmosphere, you bring into you. So you always got to stay around that positivity. Or people who are always going to feed your seed to help you grow in your spirituality, to grow in your walk, to grow and to know who you are. And I think that is so significant and important. That's very important. So, and I always <coughs> t tell them that. Know who you are and understand who you are understand your relationship with yourself so that we could go on and you can go on in life and we, we talk about that all the time especially in YRAP when I do my mm -hmm. mentoring I think that's so important because young people today are just giving themselves they're giving their gift they're just giving themselves away mm -hmm. not understanding who they are and what they need to tap into that purpose or their passion and you have so many people coming and stealing it from them that we have to cover them. I so think that's true. so that's so important. So that's why I thought today we would talk about the purpose and understanding who who you are right. and the gift that is so important to bring that out, understanding that you are the gift. He gave you life. He created you. He created you for a purpose. He, it's a gift. Really, life is a gift. And the challenge of living in this life is a challenge. He didn't say it was going to be easy. You know, but you still have to understand and tap into who you are. So um, I want to ha have some thoughts about what we're talking about. What are you thinking about? Do you have any questions? I just honestly, I think that no matter in what situation you are, if you're mad, if you're upset, you should always remember where you came from and that, like, God is always going to be there for you regardless mm -hmm. of where you are, and you have to um, always love yourself and love yourself in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Do you, any of you understand why you have been chosen? Why have you been chosen for life? Why have you been chosen for the purpose that you have? Why have you been chosen for the gifts that you have? Have you thought about that? No. Mm. You, you never thought about it? Never thought about the, the relationship with Christ? Why did God create me? Why did he give me these gifts? Why did he give me these purposes? Because everybody has unique gifts and talents. Have you ever asked yourself, God, what is my gift and what is my talent? You have? Okay, so you know what your gifts and talents are? I don't know them yet. <laughs> okay, but you kind of have an idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of have an idea where you, wh what you want to do in life. 
Shay, give me a kind of, what exactly do you want to do? What do you want to do in life? What do you, what do you want to do? What do you want to be? When I grow up, I want to be a special educational teacher, work with people with disabilities, like mm -hmm. children, teach mm -hmm. them, just like, a, like be their mentor just like you are to us. Okay. What about wow. you, Elizabeth? Well, um, I want to go maybe into the Air Force. And <laughs> after that, I would um, like restore cars mm -hmm. and like design them. Okay. Ikiara. Same as well for me, working in the Air Force. Um, um, I would want to raise my cousin. Um, and also, um, I want to be a social worker. Okay. What is it about social work? What attracts you to social work? Helping other people, organizing things for the better of the community. Like in high school, mm -hmm. like Miss Burgos in our high school, she's, yes. she has inspired me a lot. And Mr. G in, in um, Leaders of the Future in EOC, he inspired me as well a lot. Okay. See, but you're all tapping into your gift because of the community. And it takes a community as a whole to help you develop and become who you are. It's, it could be one significant person that inspires you, it could be several. But understanding that passion that is driving you, today we really want to tap into understanding the gift and the purpose of your relationship with Christ that is driving you. So I want to touch on that. I think, it's, I think, I think they, they, they already have a great head start because if you listen carefully to what each of them said, mm -hmm. uh, their aspirations are to serve others. Mm. And, and that is the kind of life that Christ lived. Uh, he served. Yes. He lived a life of, of servanthood. <clears throat> he was a leader, but he was a servant mm. leader. He mm. trained his disciples how to serve mm -hmm. people. And, it, and it's so beautiful to hear each of you talk about how, you know, you aspire to serve in some way. And it's a wonderful thing um, that, that that is something that you want to do. And it begins now. Yes. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes. It yes. begins now. And the mere fact that you chose special education, it takes a special person to work with children with spe special needs, needs, patients, you know, which is something that, a lot of people don't have patience. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have to grow and develop in, in that area a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> you know, but, you know, I hear it in each and every one of you, um, the giving. And, you know, if I can just, it's all about you right now. We, our focus is you. Mm -hmm. But I, I find myself relating with the youth so, so much, you know, and I love it. Yes. Um, I've always had a passion for it to the point where I started out in the educational field as a cafeteria aide. I worked my way up. And the reason why I got into education, because when I had my son, I wanted to be home, you know, when he was home. And so, um, you know, the door opened up for me to go into the school and work. And it was my principal that saw something in me, you know, because I took wiping those tables and taking care of those kids, mm -hmm. making sure they ate. Mm -hmm. And I would always find myself when I saw a kid that did not have, I would go spend my money and I would buy to make sure that they had new sneakers and so forth. I always found myself giving, mm -hmm. not knowing that that's, that was my um, passion, mm -hmm. not knowing that that was my purpose, that, you know, to where, to, that would leave me, lead me to now um, serving the people of God. And I'm a people person. I love all walks of people. It doesn't matter where you came from or anything. Um, I just, I, I, I have a passion for it. And um, giving back is something you, you never really, you just, you never really go to school for that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just mm -hmm. something you just do. Mm -hmm. And I found myself always helping, you know. And I love doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's your passion. It's something you do and you don't go to school for that. It's, it's, it's natural. It's a natural gift. It just comes and you just find yourself doing it. Exactly. I'm listening to you guys. You, you, you're wonderful. You already, like Pastor Kirk Lyon said, you're already well on your way. And you, you know, you, you understand that you've been purposed for greatness. Mm -hmm. Not just to sit back and wait, wait for, for whatever. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
be active and, and move and move in it. My question is going to be for you, Pastor Lyons and Pastor Serena. And in, in your um, profession, in, in being a pastor, what are you find, finding is the hardest thing for some of our youth to connect with their purpose? What are you finding the hesitation as far as connecting in their purpose and connecting in the relationship with Christ? Distraction. Distractions. Hmm. There uh, are a million and one things mm -hmm. um, that are trying to get their attention mm -hmm. with all of the bells and whistles yes. um, uh, that they have at their disposal mm -hmm. that we didn't have at their age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there are a lot of things um, that are at their fingertip at home that don't require them to leave and physically do things. Mm -hmm. uh, they can be consumed um, sitting in a chair all day long. Um, and um, it, it, a lot of them are not encouraged or inclined to explore beyond mm -hmm. what is within, within their reach. And I think um, that is, that is a, a big hindrance. That is a big, I agree with you. Um, and we're going to go to commercial. And we will be right back um, in a few minutes. Technical Worldwide Tattoo Supply is one of the largest suppliers in the world and your number one resource for top quality, affordable tattoo and piercing supplies. Technical Worldwide Tattoo Supply is the number one supplier of tattoo inks in the world with more than 200 products including Mom's Ink, Philadelphia Eddie's Traditional Inks, Paolini Sacred Color Inks and more. Technical Worldwide Tattoo Supply, your one-stop shopping destination for great service, best prices and top quality supplies. Coney Island Carlos Vintage Wines and Premium Spirits are undeniably distinctive. Selected for their unique, memorable flavor, Coney Island Carlos Vintage Wines and Premium Spirits are delivered to you in beautifully designed bottles featuring limited edition artwork. Coney Island Carlos Vintage Wines and Premium Spirits are available at affordable prices in fine restaurants, bars, and liquor stores. Or check www.coneyislandcarlo.com for availability. I am Tom Mealy for the Harrison Law Group, and I have been telling you for years that getting involved in an automobile accident is no joke. This is what we do. We're not new at this game. If you've been involved in an accident of any kind, and you go to a law firm that says you have no case, it's simple. It's because they can't do it, and they don't get it. You need to call us directly at 1-800-INJURY-LAW. Thank you. Um, th welcome back, and thank you. We're going to go to Pastor Serena, and we're talking about the youth and w what is the hindrance of youth today in tapping into their purpose and their passion uh, in the profession, pastoral p profession. What are you finding are some of the hindrances of the youth today in developing relationship with Christ? I totally agree with Pastor Kirk Lyons. Distraction, mm -hmm. and they um, are having a hard time finding themselves, um, which which they are pretty much they, what I've noticed in the, in the, in the education setting that they're always following their peers. Mm. Um, there's no self-identity. Yes. Um, they, 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 they're, they're patterning themselves after their friends. Um, it's, it's some, if I was to tell you some of the things when I asked them, you know why they do the things they do. Mm -hmm. Their their response is I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. and um, you know they think this is how I am. I said no, this is not how you are. You 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 made this choice, but they just so distracted and did no exactly. no no real focus on them. When you said that, this is just. Um, it hasn't to, anything to do with this conversation. Mm -hmm. But before I came, I was reading something on my Facebook page. Someone had posted a story. Mm -hmm. It was a story about a young lady 
who lived with her aunt, she wanted to have, the niece wanted to kill the whole family. Mm. Now, I'm just curious, from a pastoral point of view, where do you think all this is stemming from? They want to kill the family. We had last week the, uh, the father killed his son because he didn't want to pay child support. It, it's just been one thing. And then we, there was another instance where one of the young ladies was fighting with a young girl over a young man. She killed her, and now she's going to jail. Now this young man is going to live his life. Now out of all this, what, what, would, what would you say to this generation about all of this chaos that's going on? What would Jesus say? I would like to know, what, what, I, I want to know from your standpoint, what have you heard? What do you think he's saying about all of this? I think Jesus is saying what he's always said, love. Love. Love, love. yourself. Love your neighbor. Mm. Love your enemy. Mm. He, he, he was very explicit about it being the greatest commandment. It, yes, uh, love uh, and And we can, we can try to run from it, but at the center of everything, mm -hmm. it is about love and loving. Um, you, you can't love yourself and want to kill yourself and want to kill others around you there's I, I, I don't want to psychoanalyze from a distance because we don't we don't I don't know the the intricacies of that situation mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. love, love I was just thinking from the standpoint of so much hatred that you was, want to kill your family I, I don't understand that part we've gotten to the point where are you just so much hatred then the one that really stuck out to me when you asked them about gifts the mother and the father had just given a young son a, a $800 iPod, iPhone. The mother took it away from him. So he decided he was going to kill the family with a tie rod, tie odd rod, rod, because they took it away from him. Can I just? Yes, I want by all means. Pastor Kirk Lines, you know, because you are definitely a scholar. <laughs> um, it goes back to Cain and Abel, where the sacrifice, when, you know, Mm -hmm. One, you know, one one sacrifice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was they both gave sacrifices. Spices, yes. But you know, Abel. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the heart, if your heart is not in the right place, place. And you know, one thing about this this generation, it's about self. Yes. It's selfish, and that's. Mm -hmm. We see that worldwide. It's very selfish. Mm -hmm. And if you're not careful, you'll become very selfish, too. Mm -hmm. It's very easy. Mm -hmm. It's very easy. Mm -hmm. And if you do not have that agape love, when he speaks of a God so love mm -hmm. that he gave, that love, and that only comes from developing a relationship in God, mm -hmm. growing to know who he is, yes. understanding who he is, why he came, Mm -hmm. It goes back to the heart of the whole matter. And, and I know you said keeping your heart. Because mm -hmm. nobody knows the heart but God. And that heart, and that heart it yes. is so wicked. It is so deceitful. Seatful. It will deceive you. It, it, it will catch you off guard. You will find yourself doing stuff like, why did I do that? Do that. Why if, you're do that? Careful, if you're not that's careful, that's why you have to be, young people, you have to have a relationship with God. Without to. him, we are nothing. nothing. We you can't nothing. pretend like we don't need him. He said, seek me first. And everything that we do, because it's so easy to get caught up in everything else. And let me tell you something. Trying to get here today, as I was preparing to come, and what happened, something very, very bad happened in my home. And the Lord quickly he said, it's a, it's a distraction. It's to try to keep you from getting to your purpose. purpose. There's purpose yes. for us being here today. Yes. Because I know that the gift that lies in me is going to help somebody else. Amen. What's in you is going to help somebody else. 
And we can't be selfish and think about ourselves and become sidetracked with everything else, else and with every other care. We have to stay focused no matter what. And offenses is going to come. Things are going to happen. Yes. And he told the disciples, listen, these things are going to happen. Yes, yes. And rejection also brings, yes, another, that's another major, major topic. in our young people. Who likes to be rejected? Rejected. No, I know. Mm -hmm. You don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and that's another part of what our young people face is that rejection. And it, it brings in all sorts of, you know, anger, resentment, and all sorts of hatred. Exactly. And you don't even know why you hate. I can, I can go on and on telling you about some of the things that I did in my past. Amen. But we're going to have you come back, Pastor Serena and Pastor Lyons. <laughs> But just to let you know, uh, the Proverbs, Proverbs 4 and 23, mm -hmm. keep thy heart with all diligence, okay. for out of it are the issues of life. life. Okay, so just remember that. You can go back and read that scripture. I want to thank you for joining us today. Um, join us every Thursday from 4 to 5 on Madhouse TV for All About Us TV Teen Talk. Uh, if you want to reach us, go to www.aauym. Dot com, or you can look, up, look us up on Facebook, All About Us Youth Magazine. Thank you, and have a great day. Thank you for joining All About Us Teen Talk TV. Today is our first taping, and we want you to, we invite you to sit back and enjoy. Uh, we have very special guests that we will introduce you to in a in the minute. But today is tapping to understanding your purpose. Uh, we want you to be be driven by what's in your heart and know it's okay because you are designed just for you and your purpose. And today is all about understanding your purpose and your gift and tapping into it. Uh, my name is Shavana Johnson. I am the CEO and founder of YRAP, Young Women Rising Above Perceptions. I am the CEO and founder of the Whitney Johnson Foundation. Uh, I am the CEO and founder of All About Us Youth Magazine. Uh, and we just want to thank you for joining, joining us. And if you would like to know more about us, you can go to www.aauym.com. You can also reach us at 1-866-537-1110. And thank you for joining us today. <coughs> All About Us Teen Talk um, is brought to you by AAA Youth Magazine. And our mission, this is our mission, AAA Youth Magazine is to motivate all youth to define their vision and create greater opportunities to help them meet their destiny. The focus of the magazine is to help them establish a true relationship with their purpose and to engage and encourage and nurture a loving relationship of self to allow them to explore and develop a greater respect for the person they are seeking to become. Um, I would like to introduce my panel today. Um, we have Pastor Sharina Butler. Uh, we have Shay. We have Elizabeth, we have Iki, and we have Pastor Kirk Lyons. Uh, I'm going to start with Pastor Sharina Butler. I would like for you to introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about you. Well, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Sharina Butler, Pastor Sharina Butler. And um, 
I am a mother of three children, my oldest son being 25 years old and a 21-year-old and a 14-year-old. Um, I currently uh, worship at Mount Zion Temple Apostolic Church in Roosevelt, New York, um, under Pastor Margaret Giles. And um, I love the Lord. Um, you know, he's everything to me. Um, I love education. I am a teacher um, by profession. I've been teaching for 17 years, and um, from grades K to 12. And now um, my focus is as an educational consultant. Now in the um, in the South Ozone Park School District, um, and I just I love it. I love education. I love children. Um, I don't know what else to say. Um, as an educational consultant, um, mm -hmm. what is it that you do with the kids? Well, actually, what we do, um, I work for um, an independent, um, I am an independent contractor under okay. Alpha to Omega Youth Services. And what we do is we go into schools um, and help those children that are low performance in the ELA by profession, uh, professionally working in the uh, English language arts area, where we work with those students that are not doing well um, in the English, English arts, and we prepare them for the ELA uh, state testing. And what we do is we bring them, we bring their um, performance up um, oh. mm -hmm. in that area where they're weak at in most areas of reading. We, we help from those areas. Okay. Well, we thank you and we welcome you today mm -hmm. for being part of our panel. <laughs> and next we have I'm Shayla Williams, but I prefer Shay. I in 10th, I'm going to 10th grade, I'm in 9th grade right now. Um, I run track and that's my last name. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Amaya and I'm also going to 10th grade and I love sports and I love cars. <laughs> um, my name is Akira Perla. Um, I'm a female wrestler. Um, I am 15. I'm 15, and um, I go to the Freshman Center and going into 10th grade. And next on our panel, we have Pastor Kirk Lyons. Good afternoon. Um, I'm the senior pastor of St. James United Methodist Church in St. James, Long Island. As well, I'm the senior servant leader for Brothers Keepers Fellowship, which has fellowships in Newark, New Jersey, Brooklyn, New York, as well as Long Island, New York. And My Brother's Keeper, what exactly does that, what, what do you do for My Brother's Keeper? Brother's Keeper's Fellowship was founded in 2008. Um, we do several things. It is a ministry that is geared specifically for men. Uh, a lot of our focus is on young men. We have Wednesday evening uh, fellowships which consist of Bible study and uh, critical interaction between each other. We also have a Monday morning um, MANA conference prayer call that we host from 7 a.m. to 7.15. Every Friday night, we lead a group of men into uh, some of the more troubled areas of Long Island to do what we call boots on the ground. It is a, <clears throat> it is a midnight prayer walk where we go to these areas and we engage uh, specifically the young men in the, in the areas that we find uh, that are out on the streets after midnight. We also have what we call an accountability program, which matches one man to another man, very often an older gentleman to a younger man. It is, it is mentoring, but it is, it is a transparent relationship where you are accountable to each other. We have what we call the Philemon Project, which begins by letter writing uh, men that are incarcerated and then follow up by sending care packages and, and visitations, and we help prepare them for their release, and I'm, I'm just glad to say that. Uh, this summer we have three gentlemen that are that are being released, and we're excited about oh, wow. uh, uh, awesome. what's what's in store for them now. That's yes. awesome. We're going to have you come back, and we're going to have a panel of young men because we really, really need to talk to our male population as well. Not only just you know addressing young women's needs today, but today is really about understanding and tapping into your purpose. So. I really want to just get into the logistics and have a conversation about purpose because we each have a purpose and we need to understand it. Even though that I'm 
growing younger every day, we, I'm still tapping into my purpose. And I really, really uh, want the young people. I find that in this generation, they're having problems with tapping and understanding who they are. So today, we just want to kind of give them just an overlook of how we can help and give guidelines on how you understood to tap into your purpose. So I want to talk about that today. I want to understand what do you feel is your purpose? We're going to go with you, Shay. We're going to start with you first. Um, my purpose? You mean like in life? In life. What do you feel your purpose is? My purpose is to, I don't know, be, show everybody that there's more than just a female, like, I'm smart, I'm athletic, and I think God just put me on this earth to find myself and to help others. Okay. Miss Elizabeth? Well, I think my purpose here is just to help others out with whatever they need help. Okay. You care? I believe that my purpose is to outshine myself every single day. Mm -hmm. Do better than I did the day before mm. till I reach the point that I feel like I have done good enough, but like better than enough. And mm -hmm. I want to feel, and I still want to do more than that. Okay. Pass the line. I, do you mind if I engage oh, these young ahead, ladies? Oh, go ahead, engage, engage. Oh, okay. <laughs> First of all, I want to say that I'm extremely impressed to hear you all uh, in the way that you speak of yourselves and. Shay, it was wonderful that the first thing that came out of your mouth was to say that you're smart. Smart is attractive, and don't ever forget that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the age that I believe you're all 14? 15. 14, okay, mm -hmm. 15. Um, it, it, it has been said, and, and, and it's probably true, that you are much more developed and mature than your male counterparts. Mm -hmm. And that can be a bit challenging for you. Um, because a lot of things are going on in a young man's body at this age. And when they start thinking about what things are important about themselves, when they, when they get asked questions about characterizing themselves, most of what goes on is, is uh, are you here coming from them, is physical. Um, their strength, their prowess on the athletic field, and, and so on and so forth. Because th they connect to that, and that, and that drives <coughs> their self-esteem very often you don't find them talking about the internal attributes, about mm. being smart, about wisdom, uh, th things of that nature. So they're, they're a little lagging behind. And I know that that can be a challenge for you all when you get into the dating part because you've already arrived at a certain place in awareness of yourself and things that are important for you when a lot of them have not gotten there just yet. And then there's, there's peer pressure. That, that, that they deal with and it's it's so important for them to be acknowledged and affirmed by their friends um, even to the point of sometimes not caring for you all in the way that they should and in the way that they know is right but in order to put up a front to impress their friends they may say and do things that are not as kind as they should be to, mm -hmm. towards you so let me apologize in advance <laughs> <laughs> on behalf of these young men as they, as they are working towards getting themselves together. And part of the work that, that we do in Brothers Keepers is, is to work with those young men to help them get that together so that they, they are prepared to properly entreat you all in you know, the way that they should be and help, help them to get on, the, on track to, to being matured. Purpose is, a, is, a, is an extremely important thing. I think it's, I think it's difficult at the age that you are to really land somewhere with purpose. I think, I think you may go through a period where it shifts and changes over time. One of the things that you should be in tune with is your passions because very often you have a seed uh, that is planted in you uh, for a passion for something that uh, is linked to your purpose. You don't always know it at first. You have to grow into it, but we typically have um, a passion for something or, and, or a gifting for something that is, that is tied into our purpose. So when you have a passion for something, 
do what you have to do to cultivate those those gifts and work hard at them. Um, when we're when we're given something, um, we're given an opportunity, a great head start to be good or even great at something. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it is up to us in the work that we put into it. I um, I was a musician from the time I was 13, um, and then I was a professional musician for over two decades. And it was something I had an early passion for. The interesting thing is that the disciplines that were required of me in music have been transferable as a pastor, as a minister of the gospel. I spent countless hours practicing, countless hours uh, reading, reading the history of other musicians, learning, learning tons of music. Um, we have what we call standards in, 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 in music where certain songs every musician is, is um, assumed to know. Pastor Lyons, can yes. we just hold on that note? Sure. We're going to take a break. We're going to go to commercial, and we'll be right back. My name is Dr. Robert Brevard. I'm here for Multimedicine in Westbury, New York. We're located at 1065 Old Country Road, Suite 214. Been here for about 15 years. The practice has medical doctors, physical therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists. We also do pain management and we have orthopedists on staff. Here at Advanced Multimedicine Rehabilitation, we've got physical therapists on staff who treat an array of conditions from neck pain to back pain, shoulder pain. We treat carpal tunnel. We treat a lot of car accident patients, slip and falls. We treat patients with knee injuries, with ankle injuries. We have state-of-the-art equipment. We've been here for over we 15 years. We do a vast years. array of diagnostic testing from x-rays to EMGs. What is an EMG? It's a diagnostic test that allows a doctor to determine where the pinched nerve is. Cora is a physical therapist at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. She's working on...